Hey guys, Randy O at ZZ Performance. Thanks for joining us for our ZZP How It's Made corner today. I wanted to start out with how we start our green timing guide compositions here. We uh, get the guide directly from GM. This is an OEM GM component. I will go ahead and uh, scan it uh, with our EinScan here. This guy's dimensional accuracy is down to like 0.04 millimeters, which uh, for you American speaking folks here, I think it's like 1.57 thousandths, something like that. Um, I go ahead and get it here. You can see this guy's uh, white now instead of the black color when it came out. Um, I use our 3D scanner spray here. It kind of dulls down the surface so we can uh, get a nice clear scan of the part. Once we go ahead and start our scan here, uh, I'll just wave it over here. We start our scan. We have to have as many data points as possible here just so our dimensional accuracy actually means something. Typically, you know, back in the day, we would use calipers and, you know, start there, right? This speeds that process up so much, it's ridiculous, which is why we can uh, pump out, you know, prototypes and R&D parts as quickly as we do. I typically do uh, like an A and a B scan of the part. I'll, uh, you know, go in and make ourselves a plane here, just so we can cut, you know, uh, all the stuff we don't need out of this scan. Once I apply that, it'll delete all that bit. And then after that, so you'll see, it doesn't look super impressive, right? That's because these are all just data points. Um, we take our data points and we uh, generate a point cloud. That's effectively connecting all of those triangles together to make a solid surface. After that, we'll make a mesh model, which further refines that, uh, you know, those features for us and makes something a little more solid that we can use. Um, you can see a couple little holes here and there uh, just because it's kind of hard to get the light to bounce off the inside of pockets. Um, but I'll go in and fill those in manually and put the two models together to make uh, two halves of one hole. So after we're done uh, with our 3D scanning portion of the R&D process, what I'll do is I will uh, take that file, make it into a mesh, put it into our AutoCAD. Uh, we use Fusion 360 here mostly, and we'll make that into one solid file and I will uh, hand it over to Ryan to get it on the printer so we can print it out in prototype test. All right guys, Ryan D here. So the next step in our R&D process is actually the 3D printing process. After Randy, Tim, or the others uh, truly just you know, get the file set up how they want it, get it perfect for what they're looking for, at that point, I'll then get the file to then set up in our, one of our 3D printers. Depending on the product that's made, if it's a bracket or something that needs a little more precision, whether these are FDM printer here or our 3D resin printer here, and then I will clean up the file, prep the file, get it printed. From there, after a little bit of time passes, I'll then get the actual finished product out, clean it up, and then hand out to the next process. The next step after me, it actually gets test fitted either on an engine or wherever it's going inside of a car. And then after that, it gets green light, green lit for production or a reprint. And then we'll continue on the process. And hopefully if it's green lit for production, we pass right on to Steve. Hey guys, Steve over at ZZ Performance. So the next step here after Randy's done uh, 3D scanning and test fitting the guide is we order up the magic green material here and we go ahead and stick it in the, uh, the old hass here. <clears throat> Make the first prototype. And then we'll go test fit it in the car, put some test miles on it and all that jazz. And then we'll go ahead and run production, um, which will look like this when we're done here. We do a quick final QC inspection, some deburring, and then we box them up and send them out to you guys. While we're on the topic of our magic green plastic here, uh, our original green plastic material usage was on our supercharger couplers for the 3800 and Ecotech platform. We've been making these for longer than I've worked here, so a long, long, long time. Uh, we got those actually running right now in our lathe here. What we do is we do the first operation in the lathe here, and then uh, I take them all in the mill and I face the back side of them off in the mill and deburr them and prep them. Um, so I'll go ahead and set this up for you real quick. <clears throat> Slow the material in. We got a bar puller on our lathe so it makes short work out of it. Push the magic green button, and away she goes.
We turn these nice long sticks of this green material into op one of the uh, couplers. Just kind of puts the profile on the first side and then cuts it off. And then we come over here to our mill and we put them in uh, these fitted jaws here and basically do the same profile on the other side and put our logo and stuff on it. And then once they roll out of here, take them over here, just kind of give them a quick deburr, make sure all the little fuzzies are off it from cutting and then uh, they're done and ready to be shipped to you guys.